Okay, this is an introduction to chords, part three. Uh, how to read chords in a song. It's a little bit more practical than just a, a regular three chord song. The song we'll be using for this is When the Saints Go Marching In. Uh, and, and first, let's, let's discuss what we need to do to get through the song by reading the chords. So the first chord we need is the C chord. C major, and we're going to play it in root position with C on the bottom, and E and G above it. We have that chord for quite a while. We actually have that chord for six measures, uh, and it's doing a, a beat pattern of a kind. Uh, and then the chord we have after that is G major, but we're not simply going to pick our hand up and find G major. Instead, we're going to see what is on the page, and what is on the page is a slightly different structure. And by structure, I mean the spacing between the notes is different. So, if we were to look at the chords C and G, we notice that we have a common tone. We have one note that is in common, and that's the high G. And we can see that the spacing between the high G and the next note down is a little bit bigger than we had when it was the C chord. When it was the C chord, the note below G was E, and it was a third apart. We are going from one space to another space, and we're skipping over the line note in the middle. But here, we're going from space to a line, and it's further apart. So we're going to scoot our finger down, and we're going to find the next note down. And that's the line note, because we have space, line, space, line, and we can keep going forever, space, line, space, line, space, line. Uh, and that's the way it is. And then below that line note, we have another line, and we're not skipping any lines, so we must be on the next line note. Here's your space, and here's a line. Okay, so this is how I visualize the chords. I see the notes that I have in common, and I see the spacing between the notes, specifically how the spacing changes between each note. So, in this case, the bottom two notes moved down. Okay, so after the G chord, we then have the C chord again, and then we have, well, for the C chord, we have space, 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 and for the next chord, which is labeled C7, we have space, space, and then we have an empty space. And then we have another space note, which is higher than the highest space note we had before. In this case, it's going to be B, but that B also has a flat on it, which makes it B flat. So we had a note on the space that was the same as the C chord, and then the next space up, then we skipped a space, and we found the next space, and there was a flat on it. Okay? So that's that. From the C7 to the F major chord, or the F triangle chord, we have the C on the bottom. We still have that note in common. And in this case, we have C, and we have two line notes. But it's not the line note that's closest to C. That would look like this. Instead, it's line two lines above C, and then the next line above that. Okay, so that's the F major chord. The F minor chord is structured the same way. We still have space, and then we have two line notes. But the top line note has a flat on it. So we're just going to scoot that down to the black key right below it. All right. Moving back to the last line, we have the C major chord again, and again, and then we have D7. We have the same structure that we had for F major. We have C still, and then we have a space, I'm sorry, we have a line and a line, but the line that we have in the middle has a sharp on it, so we're going to scoot that one up to the F sharp. Okay, now the hardest shift, 
we're going from D7 to G major, or in this case, it's actually G7. Um, in this case, we have to see how each note moves individually. So the bottom note, C, is moving down to the B from a space to a line. The middle note, it's on the same line, but now there's a natural symbol on it, which means we can no longer have that sharp. We can no longer have the black key. So it's going to move back down to F, natural. And then the A that we had on top, on a line, is now moving down to a space. And that's the G7 chord. And then, in the last two measures, we have C again, same as it always was. And then F major, same as it was last time, with space C and line F and line A. And we have that twice. And then we go back to C major. And then the last thing that the left hand has is not a, is not a chord, it's just a note. We're going to find low C and give it a thump. Okay? So, let's go through those chords one at a time. Uh, now, we're going, to, we're going to breeze through them. We're not going to do these in time. Here's the C major chord. C, E, G. Here's the G major chord. We kept the G, and the other two notes moved down. And now they move back up to find C major. Now this G is going to jump up to the next space and find B flat. And then we're going to keep our C, and we're going to find two lines above that C, and then a line above that line. That's your F major, and then the same chord but with a flat on the top note. And then C major, just like before. And the next chord is D7. We're moving the top two notes up, and the middle note finds a sharp. And then everything moves to find G7. And then we have C major, F major, and then C major. And then, thump. <laughs> All right. Um, I hope going through this process was clear. And if it was not, go ahead and ask some questions in the comments. Um, I, I try to do this quickly enough that it's not boring, but also detailed enough that there's enough details for you to understand the process I go through when reading chords. It's all about seeing the relationships between the notes and seeing how the chord tones move from one chord to the next chord. Okay, uh, go watch the video for the whole song and you can see what it sounds like when it's all put together with the melody and the chords. And of course, have a nice day.